I said there are many examples to cite. This is only one. The second one is another scandalous arrangement, and this one affecting our day-to-day -day living, our mini meal. Ulutosh. All of us have noted that the Food Reserve Agency so far has only procured 345,000 metric tons of maize. And this was as at 26th of September 2023. As all of us are aware, in the years under the PF government, by September, the Food Reserve Agency would have bought almost 1 million metric tons. Even when the government only budgeted for 500,000, by September, the pressure on government from the farmers would lead the government to encouraging FRA to buy 1 million metric tons of maize by September. And we did that every single year. And yet this year, by 26th September, FRA had only bought 345,000 metric tons. And this is despite the high prices that are being offered and the cash, cash incentives. Because now FRA is paying farmers spot cash. And high prices, 280 kwacha a bag. We were told when they increased the price that this was to encourage farmers to sell their maize. Besides the high price, and besides the spot cash payment, they have only managed to buy 345,000 metric tons. Does anyone wonder what our food security will be come next year? Especially with a threatened harvest season. With the high cost of fertilizers, with the high cost of fuel, how many farmers will grow as much maize as they were growing before 2021? We were being encouraged that we should eat roller meal, as though roller meal doesn't come from maize. We know, therefore, that there is not enough maize in the country including national food security, because Zambia consumes about 200,000 metric tons per month for both human and animal consumption. Do your numbers. They only procured 345,000 metric tons, and we consume 200,000 metric tons per month. Several questions have arisen over this issue of millimil. One, until recently, ZNS has been selling millimil at 150 kwach per bag. We have noted that the deal with ShopRite retail chain, they are now selling millimil at 230 kwach per bag. We must emphasize that even that 230 kwach is extremely expensive. Yeah. It is unaffordable by many of our people. In May 2023, at the height of the shortage of millimil, government finally halted both maize and millimil exports after months of relentless exports. These exports have deleted our national maize grain reserves. However, government gave authority to business people to import duty-free millimil from South Africa. Despite protestations from stakeholders, especially that Zambia is a biosafe, because the Zambia Biosafety Act of 2007 bans the importation of GMO and GMO products, especially those connected to national crops of interest like maize. We have an act in place, a 2007 act, which prohibits the importation of any GMO materials into Zambia, especially food materials. And yet, Haga Inde Hijidema has given that act a blind eye and he allowed people, his friends, to import GMO millimil.
government claimed at that time that this import was in transit and destined to the DRC. Of course, it didn't make sense. And if you recall, we addressed this matter and we asked, if we are importing GMO and selling it in the border towns of Zambia, how can you guarantee that Zambians are not consuming it? And isn't it a mark of total bad neighborhood and neighborliness for you to import GMO products and sell them to your neighbors? If it is not good for you, how can it be possibly good for others? And you claim that you are an internationalist? You claim that you belong to the community of countries? There are strong allegations that these imports are being actually rebugged in Zambia. The millimew is actually being rebugged here. So the maize that the millimew are seeing written ZNS, ZNS, is not maize that was grown by Zambians. It is imported GMO. And if this allegation is true, then again, this is another crime. Because you are selling a GMO product against the act, and you are selling it to unsuspecting customers. The Consumer Protection Act states very clearly that when you sell any product, you must label the product and disclose what that product contains. To rebug GMO maize, millimew, and just sell it on the market without declaring that it is GMO is against the law. And anything done against the law is a crime. <clears throat> what we in the Patriotic Front will do is to demand transparency on this matter. And all of us, let us keep our eyes and ears open so that we can find the truth behind this matter. But also remember, dear colleagues, that the reason why the Patriotic Front government established those milling plants at the Zambia Correctional Services, and ask Honorable Kampiongo, he's here, at ZNS, Ask Honorable Chama, he's here. The reason we established those milling plants was to cushion local prices. We did not establish those milling plants for them to be used as conduits through which we are going to export millimill. No. The idea was that if there is going to be excess maize on the market, let the private sector export, not the government. Let the government be concerned about national food strategic reserve. When the private sector increases the price of millimill, ZNS must then step in, step in. Zambia Correctional Services must step in and put on the market lower prices. Now for them, we've even seen bags, ZNS bags, labeled for export. How can a government be so irresponsible? We bemoan this fact because we in the Patriotic Front, in 2021, August, we left 1.5 million metric tons of maize in reserves. And because of the good agricultural policies that we employed in 2021, 2022 farming season, we produced another bumper harvest. And all that maize was sold. And by the way, it was sold even without excise duty. Zambia did not collect, not a quacha from the maize they were exporting. What were we doing? Literally taking from the Zambians and giving to neighbors. Who runs an economy like that? I said there are many examples. I'll just give one more, and the rest I'll leave to you. We know that Wakalema 
They like to sell. They are used to selling. We were told, in case Zambians have forgotten, we were told that while all of you Zambians were sleeping during privatization, we who are awake, we made money. Now you take a person who was duping you when you were sleeping and you make him president and you expect your assets to remain intact. Have we not heard the disturbing news that your NAPSA, people's NAPSA, remember NAPSA is a public entity holding on to money of individuals for the sake of securing them in their retirement age. It is not their money. It is public money. Now, any pension scheme invests in viable ventures to make sure that when the money is required, they can make it available. Today, NAPSA is liquidating all its assets. As we speak today, prime buildings and prime plots that belongs to the people of Zambia through NAPSA are up for sale. These include York Farm, which is being sold at 466 million quarter, 23 million dollars if you wish, and developed land in Nyumbayanga housing complex, prime property in Lusaka CBD, beautiful properties along Cairo Road, from which NAPSA was attracting rent to meet their obligations of paying pensioners. Now, while Zambians were sleeping, I was making money. And now, while Zambians are even watching, they are sampling. I wonder what will remain of Zambia with this trajectory. I wonder what will remain of this country by 2026. But also remember, my dear colleagues, that Africa Life Financial Services, a company long associated with President Haga Inde Ijilema, was given a $40 million environmental protection fund under the Ministry of Mines and Minerals Development. Haga Inde Ijilema's company is the one that is going to manage the $40 million environmental protection fund that is an establishment through an act of parliament. Where was the tender? Who were the bidders? When you were sleeping, I was making money. And now, president, you don't have to sleep. He will make it anyway. I can assure you, my dear brothers and sisters, that President Haga Inde Hijirema is back not only to be president, but to finish what he didn't do in the 1990s when he participated in the privatization program of state assets. And that time he was under the watch of government. Now he's on top of the government. We should recognize that this program run by the IMF de-industrialized our country. Our manufacturing industrial base was decimated. And that is what created the rise in unemployment in Zambia. Where is Dunlop? Dunlop was making tires which were being exported around the region. Where is Lenko? Today, Lenko is a warehouse. Lenko was making trailers. Where is it? Where is ITT? Where is Sirius? People are going to London and buying jeans from London, and when they look at the label, it's Sirius Zambia. Where is it? 
the combination of Haga Inde Hijirema and the IMF spells doom for this country. And make no mistake, the Zambian people are looking towards you, the patriotic front. If you think that this party is just a game party, you are missing the point. The lives of Zambians out there depend on you. And this is the reason why we have kept emphasizing that those who want to play games, those who want to come here and just have picnic, you are in the wrong place. We need serious people. We ought to be serious. You carry yourself with the title chairman of this and secretary of this and chairman of that, and you think that ends the whole business? No. That actually starts the burden that you carry on your shoulders. For the sake of the Zambians out there, there is no other political party in this country which has as a big a responsibility as you have. You are the immediate past government. You are the party with the highest number of knowledgeable people, experienced people. Everyone is looking towards us. With all these scandals that you have heard about, the people of Zambia are starting to lose hope. And they are only looking to you as their beacon of hope. I would therefore like all of us colleagues to handle our positions knowing that these positions are only a privilege and that they are a responsibility to the 18 million Zambians, to this generation and generations to come. We mess it up in the patriotic front, we're messing it up for the Zambian people. Just imagine for a moment what Zambia will be under Haga Inde by 2026. And just imagine what Zambia would be if Haga Inde Ijidema continued until 2031. Oh. <laughs> you are the only ones who can stop him. And stop him, we must. Yeah. 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 And to stop him, we ourselves first must be formidable. We ourselves must treat each other with mutual respect and deal with matters of this party with the highest sense of responsibility and honesty. No use to just be a number. No, we don't want numbers anymore. We want members. And once you are a member, you are committed to the common cause of the others. The idea of must end. If it is Reverend Sumaidi Chavipa, that mentality has to end. And it has to end with me before we even ask our lower structures. It has to start here. I sit here as a very confident person, extremely confident, because I interact with all of you. And when I speak to a lot of you, the message I get all the time is Zambians, Zambians, Zambians. Let us continue to put the interest of Zambia first before our personal interests. You have heard how we are being harassed. And there is no other political party or position political party that is being harassed as much as you are being harassed. Why is that? Because the oppressor already knows that if there is any political party that is capable of removing them, it is you. That's why you are targets. 
That is the reason why you are targets. Now they are targeting even a retired man. Edgar Chagwalungu is not allowed to go for medical treatment. Edgar Chagwalungu can't go to a church. Edgar Lungu can't travel outside the country. On this score, I want to thank all of you, my dear colleagues, for turning up in large numbers to give President Edgar Chagwalungu and Madam Esther Lungu support each time that they are being harassed. If we don't protect the former first family, then we should know that all of us become vulnerable. We ought to protect each other. There are a number of us who are facing this charge and that charge. Today you have heard, because we decided one gentleman must become a chairman, that is an offense in itself. Now he's being followed every day. Study Mwale is now being followed. He's being hunted like a wild animal. Zinti being hunted before. Why now? Davis Mwila is always in and out of court to go and explain about money for the party. Which political party other than us are being pursued for the money that we are using to run our party? I take confidence in knowing that it is darkest before dawn. And this too shall pass. As long as we hold together, 2026 is round the corner. And joy comes in the morning. My dear colleagues, as we deliberate today, I would like to be as businesslike as possible because of the responsibilities that we carry. And I'd like to pledge that I shall make sure that we're timely so that this meeting does not take longer than it should. I promised some members of parliament, as you're well aware, members of parliament should have been in their constituencies to prepare for the commemoration of the 59th independence anniversary. But I obliged them to come to this meeting and I promised that by 14 hours we should be done so that we give them an opportunity to travel. So I appeal to all of us colleagues that we be as businesslike throughout the transaction of today's business. Thank you very much for listening, colleagues. Acting President, as we prepare for the media to leave, just offer a hand of friendship, a hand of peace whoever is seated next to you and use the opportunity to stretch and then